welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and I am in Oklahoma City this week for the annual meetup of the Congress for the New Urbanism, also known as CNU. And this is a video mashup of some of the cool urbanism and active mobility sites that I saw while walking around yesterday. And honestly, it was a rough day. It was raining hard most of the day. Anyways, I hope you enjoy it. And this is probably the worst of it. And uh, what's the old saying? There's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. Well, I forgot my rain gear, so I had to run over to REI and get some new stuff. After the heaviest of the rain stopped, I wandered up to a roundabout that I had driven through earlier on my way up to REI to get the rain gear <laughs> to see how the, the environment felt and, and as a pedestrian, whether it was an inviting environment. And it really was. You get the sense that uh, you, you are protected in that area and the motor vehicle design speed is such that uh, the motor vehicles are traveling at about 15 miles per hour. Very, very comfortable. Now there's no provisions for cyclists here, so a, a bike rider would just have to take the lane. But again, the motor vehicles are traveling at significantly slower speeds than we typically see in a North American roundabout. Uh, where they try to prioritize the throughput of motor vehicles. Here, you really get the sense that you're thinking more about uh, pedestrians and making it across the intersections as a pedestrian is, is really quite comfortable. And as you proceed over the intersection, across the intersection, you just really get, appreciate how much slower the motor vehicles are actually traveling through the area. Well done. Okay, we're here at the entrance to the Bricktown neighborhood, and these are the elevated train tracks to the Amtrak station. So if I had taken Amtrak, this is where I would have disembarked. And this is a view of what the underpasses look like, getting underneath the train tracks, connecting to the Bricktown neighborhood. You can see that they've uh, done really well with the art as well as the lighting. And then once you get to the other side, you get to a really quite attractive public space that has been created, nestled right up to where the uh, tracks are located there, which is just a wonderful way to activate the space and uh, bring the public down to the canal area. And the beginning of the canal walk. Okay, I've dropped down into the Riverwalk area here in Bricktown. And when you see this bridge, the Devon Bridge, very reminiscent of the San Antonio Riverwalk. And here's a view from on top of the Devon Bridge here at the Riverwalk. Again, just a little too cheesy an amusement park for my taste, but uh, certainly quite pleasant completely dead on a mid-morning, Monday morning. It's threatening rain. I'll have to come back out here on a Friday evening to see if there's many people. This particular structure right here, that lower level looks completely abandoned. Some of the others look pretty good. I can't tell if there's any residential units up here or if these are just office spaces. You can see some pedestrians in the distance there. And a little further down the river walk area here, you can see some of the boats. They'll get people, shuttle people along the canal. A couple of the restaurants. Okay, my final shot from the canal here uh, before I seek cover, hearing some thunder rumbling here and I'm basically at the back of the stadium anyways so I'm back at the hotel look forward to seeing this place uh, with some people talking pedestrian desire lines so this is the way the planners planned mobility walking into the Starbucks there's a Starbucks cafe here but the desire line was to come right up the hill from the crosswalk down below 
very predictable. <laughs> Humans want to do the shortest route from point A to point B. And so they likely created their cut through. Nice little path here. And eventually it got formalized with some stones. Way to go, humans. Be predictable. And here it is from the other side. You can see the route they had planned and all the way up versus the way people preferred, which is going straight up. And then I found the Myriad Botanical Gardens in the downtown area, a much needed respite from the pavement and the tall buildings. Give a little bit of green space and some water features along the way. You got some tulips that are planted and some meandering pathways. Uh, really just a delightful space and a bunch of different uh, public gathering areas. And then that building there is the Conservancy. And uh, yeah, just a really nice place uh, to be able to gather. And again, uh, many facilities for events and like this amphitheater. Um, I can imagine that there is, this is a wonderful place to be able to see an event. And then some funky bridges, <laughs> which is great. And this leads over to a pavilion and then over to the kids area which is just a delightful space for unstructured play similar to what uh, I had been discussing in my episode with Tim Gill uh, not too long ago and uh, yeah just a wonderful little space for people to gather and kids to have fun. Now, I wouldn't say that I found a ton of cycling infrastructure around the downtown area, but I did find a little bit. Uh, this is a protected bikeway that is uh, making its way around a transit stop, one of the streetcar line transit stops. So it's nice to see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's a, an actual protected facility. <laughs> it only really stretches for about two or three blocks. And then you turn around and look at the other direction on this very same street and you see that they have a lot of work to do. This is the Walker Street uh, bike lane. Um, Walker Street is being torn up and the bike lane is still in there. This is further down Walker Street heading into the downtown area. So I do plan on writing that uh, to the conference uh, later today. So I'll be able to give you a little bit of a, a report back on how that feels. And then this is one of the only buffered bike lanes I found during my walk. Now, I did find some fun traffic calming designs out there, including the squiggle, which is uh, what they're using here as you are approaching a school zone to let you know to slow down. And then also a traffic calming bison <laughs> and lots of traffic calming rocks, uh, which, as you'll recall from my episode with Leonard Nout, he's he loves using rocks, big rocks, little rocks, rocks to slow people down. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video mashup of day one in Oklahoma City. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't already done so, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel and be sure to ring the notifications bell down below. Oh, and one last thing before I let you go. Remember, I've got some pretty fun Active Town Streets are for People merchandise out in the Active Town store. Well, that's all I have left for you for day one. Seeing you 30 here in Oklahoma City. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>